Hello guys and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we hung out with Sayori a bit more. Or Sayori, excuse me, already messed that up. <laughs> and we also decided to share poems with everyone for the second time. And now that we've done that, it's pretty much the end of the day. So now we're just going to continue on and see what happens. I feel like a lot of my intros start with that, but... I'm not really good at building up suspense, especially during intros. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit in the, at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ah, uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to be choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we are also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all in the posters in case everyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Eh? Huh? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life... Do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nats Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But. I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's all about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help him out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Uh, oh no! Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. 
Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of the poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica be begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around at me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I, I'll go next! Wah! Yuri's fired up all of a sudden! Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You could do it, Yuri! It's... it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure and that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting it to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even MC liked it! I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fi fits you really nicely. But it might be the other poem that, that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where the sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay... Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before MC. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let MC lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone else has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. 
I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki, Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. <laughs> Anyway, this poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do it again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what's it, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pl pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort. It makes me really happy. happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, and I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but... I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Lucky lucky you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice though. Well uh how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, EMC. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori? Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well? So now we have the choice uh, if we would rather walk home with Yuri or walk home with Sayori. And fun fact, if you're going down Natsuki's route, then she'll ask if you'd rather walk home with uh, Natsuki or her. So, just a fun little detail there. Since we're going on Sayori's route, it'd be kind of mean to just say, Nah, I'd totally ditch you for this other girl. Let's say we would walk home with Sayori. Sayori? You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? B but she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, MC. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Especially since she doesn't want to talk to me after I made a poem that was too cutesy. I mean, what the hell's up with that? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. 
Who knows what will happen in, in that time. Okay, poem game number three, ending off chapter two. Uh, this is going to be pretty much the same as before. You know how the poem game works. So let's just make our way through this. Let's see here. Skipping, I could see, is either a Sayori word or a Natsuki word. Love... I think love is Sayori. Yes, okay. And then adventure is definitely Sayori. Uh, alone is Sayori. And then... Hop is Sayori. Maybe Dark? Okay, yeah, that's definitely Sayori. And then we, there's also Sing. Fun? Yep, fun. Uh, amazing. Rain Cloud. Dazzle. Yeah, that, I think that I remember that being a word. And then Treasure, I think we got in a previous poem game. Family. Tears. Joy. Music, I think, is... Yeah, that's Sayori. <clears throat> Hurt. Fear. Bed. Hopeless? Play? Pain. I think we got a perfect Sayori poem that time. That's awesome. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm, and I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Uh, weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean, you by all people? You of all people. Because it's right in your name. Mon Ika. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as funny as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at the desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone else. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else, but the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers at her desk. MC, what's up? 
Hey, this might sound a little strange, but uh, have you noticed anything with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but uh, she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica appears across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, MC. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really been like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know that's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club, club members, you know? Maybe I'll, I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, MC. Me? How on earth did you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anyone, anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, MC. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know, anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh... Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Okay, everyone. I guess we're ending off this episode on another okay, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, a good bit of stuff happened this episode. We shared poems, and Sayori seems to be a bit sad. Maybe we'll find out what that's all about in the near future. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!